recently due to innovators like Dick Smith and Rick Baker and Rob Oteen. We've come up with something called special makeup effects. And that's what we do here. In designing a character for a motion picture, first you start with a sketch. This is a sketch of a troll. From the drawing, I went to a sculpture. From the sculpture, I created a mold. In this, our casting process, we normally use a flexible casting agent. In this case, we're using polyurethane foam and latex. It creates a very flexible, lifelike skin. After the casting process, our mechanical armature is inserted. And through a series of cables, we can do some fairly refined movements, such as moving fingers, moving entire hands, and articulating things in a very delicate fashion. After the mechanics have been inserted, the painstaking painting and hair application takes place. We use a rubber cement based paint that's extremely flexible. In creation of the final troll, we create a number of creatures that all look alike but are capable of different and separate functions. Each one is mechaniced to move in a specific manner. One can roll his eyes from left to right, another has full rotation, another can blink, another can snarl, another can frown. After the creatures are fabricated, we bring them onto the set, and there our technicians puppet the creatures as we did in the motion picture Ghoulies. That's a scene from Ghoulies, which is all about a young guy who moves into his late father's house and begins to emulate his dad, a satanic cult leader who controlled a flock of furry, slimy creatures. Blah! <laughs> this film is strictly from hunger. And it's not even scary. The little creatures, which are supposed to resemble last year's gremlins, I suppose, don't come off very well as monsters. They seem more like a repulsive set of Muppets who've been covered with shellac. From the ads, I expected Ghoulies to be disgusting. But it's even worse. It's dull. That's right, I think that...